Hey everybody, it's Rob the Backyard Gardener, and because it's almost the frost season here in Texas, it's time to get my young citrus trees and my avocado trees ready for the indoors. One of the first things you want to do before you decide to bring your plants indoors for the winter is make sure you have a good spot for them. Now I recommend if you're bringing them inside the house, you have a grow room with ample lighting, at least 5,000 lumens, and they'll need that for six to eight hours minimum per day. Or you can place them in a south facing window if you don't have a grow room. But you gotta make sure that you have a spot prepared and picked out that's strategic enough that's gonna let the plants adapt to the indoor climate. If you're not bringing them indoors and you're gonna be using a greenhouse, like the one that you see that I'm standing in, you wanna make sure that the greenhouse provides pretty good protection from the frost. Now here in zone 8A, we don't get a lot of hard, hard freezes and we don't get them for a long period of time typically but it is known to have 30 days straight of uh, sub-freezing temperatures. So because of that, I have to prepare for the worst case scenario. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about preparing my citrus plants specifically to bring them indoors and in the greenhouse, but I'll also be talking about how I'm gonna leave some in the greenhouse over the winter to see how they do, as well as bring my favorite ones or the ones that are the front runners indoors. Let me go ahead and flip the camera around. We'll take you to the side of the yard where I have my citrus tree sitting. So I figured I'd give you a look at all of my citrus that I've grown from seed. I've got my four orange trees on this side and my two lemon trees on this side. I'll tell you that the lemons came from Meyer lemons. So pretty confident they may be Meyer lemons as well. But these were from a navel orange hybrid. And as you know, you can't grow navel oranges from seed. So I'm very curious to see if these come out to be oranges or another species of lemons or any type of citrus. It could be grapefruit. It could be anything like that. So really curious how they come out. But the main purpose of this video is to go ahead and let you know that it's time to bring them indoors now for the winter. I've got a couple things I've got to do in order to prep them for the winter. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So one of the things I've done over the last month is about Four weeks ago, I went ahead and fertilized all of these citrus plants because I knew it would be the last time they'd be fertilized between now and the spring. So I gave them a light dose of an organic fertilizer, basically a 555 fertilizer, just a balanced fertilizer. That way they'd have a little more nutrients in these pots for over the winter. I've also topped off the pots over the last couple of weeks with just a little bit more of my organic compost and potting soil mixture, about 50-50. That way they'd have some fresh soil to grow within. One of the things I've also done over the last month is put them out here in this direct sunlight because we're getting less and less sunlight because it's becoming winter. I've put them out in direct sunlight for a couple hours a day and then I've got them in indirect sunlight for another four hours and then I've left them in the shade the rest of the day. I'm doing this because once they go inside indoors, they're gonna get a lot less uh, natural sunlight than they would if they were outside. And I want them to get used to not getting as much sunlight. They seem to be no worse for wear. They're doing pretty good. This uh, stunted lemon tree is the only one that doesn't look the healthiest. I don't know what's going on with him. The other lemon tree looks great. Now that I've given them a light dose of fertilizer over a month ago, and now that they've been acclimated slowly to less and less sunlight, the final step I'm gonna do is hose them all off, which I've actually already done. I've hosed off all the undersides of the leaves to make sure I've removed any pests. Once they're moved out of the sunlight, I'm gonna spray them with a organic foliar spray that I make myself out of soap and water. If you haven't seen my soap and water video, I'll put a link above here, you can check it out. But I'm gonna spray them because I wanna make sure I eliminate the risk, or at least reduce the risk, of any of the pests that we could bring indoors like spider mites, fungus gnats, and of course aphids. I'm gonna let the soap treatment sit on there for about six hours, and then tonight, I'm gonna rinse them off one more time with the garden hose, make sure I spray off any of the carcasses or dying pests that I may have missed on the first spray, and then tomorrow, I'll be bringing them indoors in my indoor grow room. Now, it's also a good idea if you're bringing plants from outdoors to indoors, you wanna make sure that you eliminate the risk of any of the larvae or any of the eggs that might be in your soil from hatching and coming out and then infecting your plants. So a smart thing to do, which I'll be doing as well, 
is topping off all the pots with a nice little half inch layer of sand. You can use play sand or whatever. Now, the problem with using the sand sometimes is that you can't really see the moisture uh, level of the soil. But that shouldn't be a problem because you can always have these in trays and bottom feed the water slowly. Keep in mind, you'll be doing a lot less watering over the winter while the plants are indoors because they'll use a lot less water. So you almost want to let the soil dry out, not completely, but pretty close to completely before you do waterings once again. I'm also gonna be just taking off some of the dying or less than desirable leaves because I really don't want the plant focusing its energy on trying to recuperate any of these. And plus, now that they're coming indoor, they don't need as much foliage as they have on now. I won't be heavily pruning these. These are still just over a year old and it's not really that smart to prune young fruit trees or even citrus trees in their first couple years. So if I do any topping whatsoever, it'll be just take off the last few limbs where the leaves aren't good. So now that I've had them rinsed off, I went ahead and rinsed them off with my insecticidal soap spray, if you will, the water and soap. I've rinsed them again with fresh water. I've done it a couple of times over the last week. I've now placed them in my greenhouse. I've also got my avocado trees in here because they will not be able to tolerate the Texas freeze as well. So we've got the orange trees on this side of the greenhouse, the lemon trees on this side of the greenhouse, and the two small avocado trees on this uh, back side of the greenhouse. We're gonna leave them inside here for the next week. We're not supposed to get any frost over the next week, but this greenhouse is all sealed up. I'll be able to zip up this door as well. And when I do that, it should create a pretty good protection in here. I will be bringing, like I said, some of my indoor grow room. Probably my best uh, orange plant will go indoors. Maybe my top two orange plants, my top lemon plant, and maybe my best of the two avocados I'll bring indoors. But I'm curious to see if this greenhouse can serve its purpose over the winter and keep these guys protected from the frost. Now, obviously over the next several weeks to several months, if I notice that the plants in here are struggling, I'll bring them indoors. But I wanted to show you where they're at. And like I said, the next step is to top off all of these soils with some sand. All right, so I'm in the greenhouse right now. I had to do a little bit of maintenance on it. I got some zip ties and retied the top. The little tiny straps that it came with has started to break. So I had to do a little bit of maintenance just to make sure that this roof stays on nice and taut. But I went ahead and topped off my two best citrus plants with uh, sand, like I said. This is to prepare them to go indoor in my indoor grow room. I will definitely be bringing at least those two indoors. And I, didn't, I wanted to try another median. I had some coarse little tiny rock. So I went ahead and tried that in these two pots. These are gonna be outside. So having the sand is not as necessary. You'll recall, like I mentioned, the sand will prevent any of the fungus gnats, the aphids and things that lay their eggs in the soil. They can't penetrate through the sand. The sand is a little bit too heavy for them to move, so they can't get in there. So I put about a quarter inch to half inch layer of sand in both of those. And because this is more coarse, I put about a half inch layer or more on there inside those pots as well. Again, we'll see how this greenhouse does over the winter. I went ahead and did both lemon trees since I only have two, despite one looking terrible, I only have two. And if you'll recall, this is the one that got the disease and we've been fighting the disease all along. I've also done a good job of trimming off all of the uh, foliage that was less than desirable. That way these plants aren't struggling trying to support maintaining unhealthy leaf structures. So that's where we're at today. I also went ahead and topped off my two avocado trees. I'm probably gonna try to leave these in here as long as possible. But again, the ones with the sand are prepped to go indoors, which I'm gonna postpone for as long as I can. And uh, I'm gonna get an indoor thermometer for this greenhouse. And the minute that I have frost, I'm gonna see if this greenhouse gets colder than I would like. Remember, these aren't gonna be exposed to the frost elements because of the, the top of the canopy on this greenhouse. However, if it gets to 19, 20 degrees for several days outside, it's gonna be pretty cold inside and we don't wanna put these guys through that kind of stress. Anyway, I wanna recap with you guys a couple of things. One, <clears throat> make sure you have a spot picked out, whether it's in a greenhouse or in a grow room for your plants to be overwintered. Two, make sure that you have fertilized about a month 
ahead of time to get them one last boost, give them as much nutrients as possible to get them ready for the overwintering process. Then you'll want to slowly acclimate them over a month for a few less hours per day in direct sunlight so they get used to the less sunny conditions that they'll be exposed to in this greenhouse and in an indoor grow room. And then also you got to be careful of pests. So you want to spray the leaves down really good. Then you'll want to treat them with some kind of insecticide. I prefer organic, just soap and water. And then you'll want to do that a couple of times over a week. And then top off the potting plants with a little bit of sand or coarse rock. That way it prevents any fungus gnats, spider mites, aphids from laying eggs in here, hatching and getting all over your plants. Well, there you have it, everyone. This is the process that I like to follow to overwinter my citrus plants or any subtropic or tropic plants that you're growing in a zone not suited for them. Again, this is my first year at growing citrus, so it's also kind of an experiment to see how we do. Hopefully you enjoyed this video with me. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy gardening and thanks for watching.